Hey there, welcome to For Dragonflies and Me. I'm Jean Roman and you are here visiting me at my blog or my YouTube channel or my um, podcast as well. So today I know I want to just say hi again because it's been a few minutes since I have posted anything. If you have been following me on my social media, Instagram and Facebook, uh, you will have just seen uh, the last couple of days I've been posting about my outdoor wedding reception. So Dave and I got married last year in September of 2022 uh, but I wanted an outdoor wedding a summer wedding um, we were planning it at my other house which was going to be a little bit bigger uh, with a live um, entertainment and a photographer and a lot of other things but when we decided to move due to a um, an opportunity one of my sons got for to play football at a private school, uh, we moved to the Waterford area and so I left my seven acre uh, large property and large home and beautiful entertaining space to a much smaller just regular backyard um home and so we if again if you've been following me you know that I redid Dave and I and the boys redid the whole backyard we put up a privacy wall we put up my little greenhouse we created a outdoor um uh patio area and then of course my raised bed garden so it has been, the last month has been really busy with prepping for the reception and making sure that the yard was perfect and, um, or as perfect as it could be. And um, so the reception over the last two weeks um, was very, every day there were tasks, as you all know, I do an organization uh, series in January of each year. And so I implemented a lot of those um those skills and those task settings to the prepping for my wedding reception, including daily task lists, uh, to do's, you know, assigning tasks to each of us. And so with that, we pulled it off and it was beautiful. Um, so I am going to be doing a blog on how to create an ultimate, uh, backyard wedding. So keep posted for that. It's probably going to be out next week. It's going to be on my podcast as well as YouTube. And my blog. So today we're going to get back into a gardening 101. And as you all know, if you follow me at all, I usually uh, do a beautiful PowerPoint, which I have done. And then I talk to you about it and I interject during it, but I like to do the PowerPoint. So if you guys want to take notes or you can pause and write things down or copy paste it, whatever. And so that is generally how I do it. So if you're a first time here again, welcome. I'm Jean Roman and you're here at For Dragonflies Me. And today we're going to talk about ladybugs to lace wings and how to incorporate and attract uh, beneficial insects into your garden. And all of you who follow me know that I garden organically and I incorporate companion planting as well as different techniques to uh, draw in those uh, beneficial insects to attack the bad wings. Right now I'm dealing with something with my uh, zucchini squash, my round Denise, and my, my fruit keeps rotting on the vine. And so I, I'm really, I need to do a little bit more research. I've utilized the neem oil. Uh, I'm not putting any chemicals on it. So I got to do a little more digging on that. So I will keep you guys posted up on that on uh, Instagram and Facebook. So I'm going to share my screen now and pull up the, and create a slideshow. And there we go. So here we are, friends. Welcome to For Dragonflies and Be Tips and Tricks for the Home and Garden. And I'm, again, Jean Roman. So uh, today's topic is Gardening 101 from Ladybugs to Lace Wings, how to attract the right beneficial insects to your garden for pest control. Um, again, you all know that I garden organically. Um, I'm not putting Roundup or Seven Dust or any of the other things um, or any other uh, chemical pesticides into my garden. Again, I'm. It's never. you're never going to get shamed if you do do that here. That's just not how I choose to garden. Um, and I try to teach people how to garden organically, but I am happy just if you're gardening. So uh, for those of you who have been following me for years, you know I make every attempt, again, to incorporate organic methods of fertilization, disease, and pest management techniques. And gardening can be so fulfilling and, and such a rewarding hobby, although I would say the biggest challenges that gardeners face is pest control as well as disease control. But today we're talking about pests. So pests can wreak havoc on your garden, damaging plants and crops. And the use of pesticides is, of course, an option, but it can be harmful, harmful 
harmful to the environment, including beneficial insects, which can help with pest control naturally. So companion planting is one way to attract beneficial insects that are natural predators that feed on those pests. So providing a natural and effective way to uh, to to incorporate that is what we're gonna talk about in today's episode. So I'll discuss the different types of beneficial insects, their benefits and how to attract them to your garden for natural pest control. So here we go, let's roll. So here are some bugs. Beneficial insects, what is the deal with them? So they play a crucial role in pest control. They are natural predators that feed on pests such as aphids, caterpillars, and mites among others, uh, thus reducing the population. By doing so, beneficial insects help prevent damage to plants and crops, which can lead to a higher yield and which we want that. So moreover, beneficial insects are environmentally friendly as they do not harm the ecosystem. Unlike pesticides that can be harmful to both pests and beneficial insects alike. And uh, so this is the one thing that talks about aphids here. Um, and that's what I think I have in my uh, zucchini bed. But um, like I said, I need to do a little deeper dive for that. So. Um, the importance of beneficial insects in pest control. Let's talk a little bit about that. One of the main benefits of beneficial insects is that they are self-sustaining. Once they have established a presence in your garden, they will continue to reproduce and thrive, providing a continuous and natural pest control solution. And additionally, beneficial insects do not pose a threat to humans or pets, making them a safer alternative than pesticides. Um, but however, even when I'm using neem oil or any other of my fish emulsion, and Frankie, if you guys follow me on Facebook, you know, Frankie Fridays, uh, Frankie loves to eat that stuff. It's so disgusting. <laughs> it's like, oh, gag. But yeah, he does. Anyways, dogs. But uh, he loves to be in the garden with me. But I do not allow him in the area when I'm using any type of uh, natural pesticides either. Um, they are harmless to them, but I'm not taking any chances. Frank's my little boy. So common beneficial insects and their characteristics. So here we have some ladybugs, um, your honeybees, of course, they're not necessarily a beneficial insect, but they do help pollinate and you do want to attract them to your garden. Um, and by using pesticides, you are killing them as well. And we don't want to do that. And of course, a gardener's best friend, the praying mantid. So there are many types of beneficial insects that can help with pest control in your garden. And here are some of the most common ones and their characteristics. So ladybugs. Ladybugs are one of the most well-known beneficial insects, and they are small, round, and brightly colored with red and orange bodies and black spots. Ladybugs are vicarious eaters, consuming up to 50 aphids per day. And they also feed on other insects, such as mites and white flies, making them an effective natural pest control solution. So I'm not, uh, I'm going to be 100% honest. I have not seen any ladybugs in my garden so far this year. And um, I'm a little troubled by that. I have already seen a couple cucumber beetles and I have already seen a squash bug and which scares me. I've already applied my neem oil twice now, three times now. And um, I, I am just really hoping that these little guys will find their way to my garden soon. Lace wings. A lot of you may see this bug and think, oh, gross. You know, it's like and swat at them. Don't swat at them. They are your friend. Uh, but they are very delicate insects with lace wings, hence their name. And uh, they are green or brown in color and have a long antennae. Uh, lace wing larvae are ferocious predators feeding on aphids, caterpillars, and other soft bodied insects. So adult lace wings feed on the nectar and pollen, making them important pollinators as well. So as you can see, you know, these insects not only are your natural predators that you want to attract your garden. Garden, they're also your pollinators. So again, using pesticides, you're killing the good guys too. And so, you know, utilizing natural resources is always going to be the best bet for any garden. And there is a praying mantid. And I actually took that picture uh, that was actually on my sedum at the other house. And when I saw him, I called my boys out. I was like, look at this guy. He's huge. Actually, I think it's a female. I think they say the females are the large ones and then the males are the small guys. But praying mantises are large insects with long, thin bodies and powerful front legs and they that they use to catch their prey. And so they're green or brown in color and have triangular heads with large eyes. They're buggy eyes. Praying mantises feed on a variety of 
insects, including crickets, grasshoppers, and even other praying mantises. They are carnivores, uh, and and yeah, they're kind of vicious. But uh, they are as effective as other beneficial insects for controlling pests, but they are also fascinating to observe in the garden. They fly, they crawl quickly, they, they really blend in. They're almost like, um, oh, what are those? Um, Oh my gosh, total brain freeze here. Uh, chameleons, where they blend in. If they're on more green, they do turn more green and like kind of like tree frogs too. But uh, they are a gardener's best friend. So definitely teach your children. They look creepy crawly, but don't ever kill them. So how do we attract the beneficial insects into our gardens? So this is something I'm currently working on too. Like I just said, I'm trying to get my ladybugs and praying mantises and other uh, of these beneficial insects into the garden. So now you know the benefits of them and the common types. The next step is let's talk about attracting them to your garden. So let's talk a few tips. Uh, choosing the right plants for beneficial insects. One way to attract beneficial insects to your garden is to plant the right plants. Many beneficial Beneficial insects are attracted to plants with small flowers that produce nectar and pollen. Examples of such plants include dill, fennel, yarrow, and Queen Anne's lace. You can also plant herbs such as basil, parsley, and cilantro, which not only attract beneficial insects, but also provide a source of fresh herbs for cooking. So now, of course, I have uh, basil, parsley, and cilantro in my garden. So those are uh, some of the plants that I'm utilizing. I also incorporate nasturtiums and marigolds, which do also attract uh, those beneficial insects. So creating a habitat for beneficial insects. Beneficial insects need a place to live and reproduce, and you can create that habitat for them by providing shelter, such as a pile of rocks, a log, or a stack of branches. You can also leave some areas of your garden undisturbed, such as a corner with a tall grass or a pile of leaves. Another way to attract beneficial insects is to install a bug house, which provides a home for insects such as ladybugs, lacewings, and solitary bees. Um, even creating like a little bee bath, uh, they're so cute. Imagine like the big bird bath, but take a little terracotta pot and then, you know, the little uh, Petri dishes, not Petri dishes, but the, the, your, the dishes that the pot sit in. Oh my gosh, again, brain freeze. But you put that on top of an empty or an upside down pot. I'm going to do this uh, in the garden and show you guys on uh, social media, but then put some marbles in it and then just a little bit of water. And that's actually a bee bath where they will go and drink. So you definitely want those things in there too. But as you can see in this picture, I, I, um, and in my garden now, um, I mulch with grass clippings and I also do use leaves in the fall. And and so the, there are these, this is another way that you can uh, create that habitat for them. Avoiding pesticides and its impact on beneficial insects. So again, there's never any shame here, but I do also want to uh, provide some education on why I don't use pesticides and utilize organic methods. So pesticides can be harmful to beneficial insects as they can kill them along with the pests. So if you must use pesticides, try to use them sparingly and only when necessary. You can also use organic pesticides such as neem oil or insecticidal soap, which are less harmful to beneficial insects insects. And in, in conclusion, you know, trying to avoid using pesticides during the day uh, when beneficial insects are most active. And there is a little praying mantis and a little bad bug. So monitoring and evaluating the effectiveness of beneficial insects in pest control is another key factor. And like I've always told you guys during many of my episodes, if you know, to, uh, tours in my garden, I'm always out there every day looking under leaves, looking and monitoring and managing uh, the garden, making sure, like I said, I just saw some uh, cucumber beetles and I killed them right away. I killed the squash bug, but I also went right away and I sprayed neem oil over everything. So once you've attracted your beneficial insects into the garden, it's important to monitor their effectiveness in controlling your pests. So keep an eye out for signs of pest damage, such as holes in leaves or wilting plants. And right now I have seen holes in my leaves and um, also a couple of my tomatoes are starting to wilt. And so I need to do more investigation and understand what's happening. So if you notice a pest infection, station. Observe it uh, observe if the beneficial insects are feeding on them. You can also use sticky tra traps to capture and identify pests and beneficial insects. By monitoring and evaluating the effectiveness of beneficial insects, you can adjust your pest control strategy um, accordingly. And just making sure, like I told you guys, I'm going to be sprinkled. We've had so much rain right now. So it's like kind of like I've been waiting to put some of my controls out because the rain just washes it away. So it's kind of like 
you know, defeating the, the, the purpose of what I'm doing. So I am going to be sprinkling some organic white flour over my potatoes. And um, also um, I want to do apply another, uh, uh, I want to apply the neem oil again, and I'm going to be putting some more cayenne pepper out. So other natural pest uh, control methods to complement beneficial insects. Let's talk a little bit about those. So while beneficial insects are effective in controlling pests, they are not the only solution. Here are some other natural pest control methods that complement beneficial insects. So you can do crop rotation. Uh, crop rotation is simply the practice of planting different crops in different areas of your garden each year. And this helps prevent the buildup of pests and diseases in the soil, reducing the need for pesticides of any sort. Companion planting, which you know I have talk about all the time. I've done a blog and a, a YouTube video and a podcast on that. So definitely want to check those out uh, for more information. But in, in short, uh, competing planting is a practice of planting two or more types of plants together that benefit each other. And for example, that's marigolds near tomato plants, and that can help re uh, repel pests such as nematoids. Manual removal, which I just told you guys, I smushed uh, some of the cucumber beetles and the squash bugs. So putting their guts on the plants actually also acts as a natural deterrent. So manual removal involves physically removing the pests from your plants. Uh, and this can be done by hand picking them or using a, steam, a stream of water to wash them off. Um, I'm all for killing them. I'm not, you know, <laughs> I'm not like, oh, let's take this tomato worm and put it in somebody else's garden. No, kill them. Uh, I'm sorry. They do. Uh, birds will feed on them as well. But, you know, for the most part, if you get infested with tomato worms, um, I have paid my kids, you know, a few, a nickel or whatever, a dime to uh, collect them off the plants. Use gloves. You can use tweezers, whatever. They're really super gross. But um, you want to get them out of your plants because once they're there, they're going to start laying eggs and reproducing. So a uh, little bit about companion planting. I talk about this book all the time uh, by, by Louise Riot, Carrots of Tomatoes. And this is every gardener's uh, Bible to companion planting and, in, and uh, attracting beneficial insects. So while gardening can be challenging, but a rewarding hobby, but dealing with the pests is, is part of that uh, gardening. So, however, with the help of beneficial insects, you can control pests naturally and effectively. By creating a welcoming environment for ladybugs, lacewings, and other beneficial insects, you can say bye-bye to harmful pesticides and hello to the thriving garden. So remember to choose the right plants, create habitat, and monitor their effectiveness. Uh, and this, with these tips, you can and will attract the right beneficial insects to your garden for natural pest control. So if you enjoyed this episode and you want to see more episodes like it, visit me at my blog at fordragonfliesandme.com and be sure to subscribe there and here so you don't miss a beat. And if you did find uh, value in this video, be sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss a beat. But in all, friends, what I am always striving to do is I want to encourage you to grow your own food. And if you don't have a big yard, don't be dismayed. You can do it in containers and um, even on a patio. And you can see that in another blog that I wrote um, on container gardening and how to incorporate that. So if you enjoyed this episode, again, smash that like button, follow and share my information, but also leave me a comment. What do you do in your gardens uh, for natural pest management? Something I haven't talked about. I I am not the the all knowing, uh, you know, I don't know everything. And that's what I love about talking to other gardeners. You know, we share with one another and we collaborate and we get information and we share tips and tricks. And that's what this is all about for dragonflies is tips and tricks for the home and garden. So if you aren't following me on Facebook and Instagram, be sure to go over there because I do daily reels and posts on everything happening. Um, Facebook is more information and a lot of cool stuff where my Instagram, I do a lot of live reels of uh, tours of my garden. So one more time, be sure to smash that subscribe button so you don't miss a beat. And thanks so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this class and my episode, uh, be sure to visit me at my podcast as well. And right now I'm going to stop sharing and tell you guys like I always do at the end of my episodes and everything I do because it is so key to my heart and it truly is who I am and what I'm all about. So be sure to eat fresh, shop local, and have a happy day. And I will see you soon in the kitchen or the garden. Bye friends. <music>